Oh my god, did he really just get his lav mic out and then accidentally put his necklace on the outside of it? Oh my god. And he thinks he's a professional? I can't believe you would do something like that. What a loser. Oh my god, and all that autofocus. What, does he think that looks good or something? Oh my god. Hey guys, it's your family here, and today I'm going to be doing some uh, benchmarks on an older computer. As a computer technician, I spend a lot of time working with like really high-end systems and like bit putting together really high-end systems. And like downstairs, I have a pretty nice computer that can run stuff. Like I, I do a lot. Of, I spend a lot of time at like 4K Ultra playing like really high frame rates and stuff. But sometimes it's fun to look at some older systems that have older hardware. And so today I'm going to be looking at a uh, an Athlon 64X2 computer. And you might be thinking to yourself, that doesn't really look like an Athlon 64X2 computer. This is actually my old computer. This is an i7 4790K and a GTX 980. And I'm going to be doing a video on that later. But uh, right now, I'm actually going to be doing it on the Athlon 64X2 computer, which I gave away recently because I didn't really have a use for it, so I just gave it away to somebody who needed a computer. I also had some old graphics cards and actually some fairly newer graphics cards that I figured I'd do some testing on with that computer and uh, just see kind of what the results were. So first off, I'm gonna be doing some synthetic benchmarks. I'm gonna be doing, and I didn't pick like the newest games or the best games. I picked a couple of new games. I picked a couple of really old games. I picked a couple uh, like mid-range, like it is kind of playable on everything kind of games. So I'll be able to go, cause I have uh, the three graphics cards I'll be using are the uh, 9500 GT, the GTX 650, and the GTX 960. Uh, they're all NVIDIA cards, I just don't have any AMD cards right now. It's not that I don't like AMD cards, I just don't have them right now, so I'm just gonna deal with all NVIDIA cards. The first benchmark I did was uh, 3D Mark Cloudgate, which is actually, a, I'm pretty sure that's a phone benchmark, but I'm doing it on a computer because it's so low power. Uh, and as you can see, the graphics score scales pretty, pretty much for how powerful those graphics cards are. Uh, the physics uh, is tied to the CPU, so that doesn't really change at all between the three runs. Uh, the score does go up as you go up the graphics cards, but that's only because the graphics score is increasing, so of course it's gonna go up. Uh, next, uh, synthetic, I, I didn't buy it because I'm cheap, so I'm just running the benchmark over and over and over. Uh, the next synthetic I did was 3D Mark Fire Strike, which is a DirectX 11 game, so it actually doesn't even run on the 9500 GT. So then skipping up to the GTX 650, uh, it scored a, it was actually a pretty balanced system in this test. The physics, graphics, and overall score uh, were pretty even, so I would say that that is a fairly well balanced system so if you were going to be like actually putting this system together I would recommend the GTX 650 just because it had the most balanced results here uh, and then going up to the 960 you're going to be seeing a, of course a pretty steep improvement on the graphics and the score but again the physics is the same because once again it's tied to the CPU and not the graphics card. Now let's get into some actual games. Uh, the first game I'm going to be running is Dirty Bomb because it's still running DirectX 9. Uh, I should say at this point that I'm also running all the games at 1080p, pretty much everything at the lowest settings they can go at, just so that the 9500 GT has a chance. And as you can see, it minim its minimum is zero, its average is really low, and its mi uh, maximum is 20, so unplayable right there. It also had massive input delay so it was not a good experience in, at any level. Uh, the GTX 650 fared a lot better but the minimums were just not good at all uh, so it was stuttering a lot in, these te in this game. Uh, the GTX 960 did have a higher minimum frame rate uh, but the average and max were basically the same so uh, once again like I said, I would probably recommend the uh, GTX 650 here because it's a more balanced card for the rest of the system. I mean, the system only has three gigabytes of uh, system memory anyway, so it's gonna be bottlenecked by that. And it's, I mean, it's an Athlon 64X2. 
It's an old CPU, it's not a very powerful CPU, especially against today's standards. So I'm impressed that it was even able to get a max of 60 frames per second, but you don't really see any improvement going up to the uh, 960. Uh, going into the next game, Divinity, another really new game, uh, came out just like six months ago. It's another DirectX 11 test, so uh, it's not going to be able to run on the 9500 GT. The GTX 650 was able to run basically unplayably. It was really laggy, it was really slow. Uh, I, I'm impressed it even loaded it all with 3 gigabytes of system memory. I'm really impressed that it did that at all. So that's good at least, but I mean, we're seeing averages of less than 5 frames per second and maxes of less than 20. So it was not a playable experience. Also, you'll see that when we go up to the 960, the maximum frame rate actually goes down from the uh, 650. And I'm going to guess that that's either because I was just running around in town and maybe something happened different. Maybe I started the benchmark at a different place or something. I mean, I only ran each test one time, so I didn't average it out over multiple. Uh, so that probably is also contributing to it. So testing methodology probably wasn't the best. I would probably say they're basically equal. FTL is a game that's basically designed for any kind of hardware. So uh, as you can see, it runs pretty much the same on all the different systems that I ran. The GTX 650 is the only real anomaly in here with the minimum of zero. I think it just dipped for like one second or something. Maybe the game froze, maybe you know, a million other things, I would probably not put too much weight into that. Uh, it's probably because I did all the testing at like 3 a.m. and I was too tired to really care. Half-Life 2, that's an older game, uh, DirectX 9, so I can, can run the 9500 GT. And the 9500 GT actually runs fairly well compared to the GTX 650 but I would say we're running into CPU bottlenecks there. There's no way the 9500 GT should be so close to the 960 uh, and actually beating it in minimum frame rates. So I would chalk this one up to uh, CPU or uh, RAM bottlenecks. PUBG is another really demanding game that is DirectX 11. So wasn't able to run on the uh, 9500 GT. The 650, the GTX 650, I would say that it barely ran. Uh, it was seeing averages, single digit averages, maxes of just barely into the double digits. Uh, so definitely not playable. It was really laggy. Uh, when I tried to enter the game, it actually wouldn't even load the starting area and it would almost load the plane and then I would get halfway across the map. It was, it was basically a bad experience. I was barely able to even get the benchmark through. And then the GTX 960 uh, ran a little bit better, but once again, minimums of zero, maxes of just over 30, not, not a good experience. I was having the same kind of problems where it wouldn't load the starting area, and I sort of dropped like mid-map. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say that that's because of uh, either CPU or RAM or both uh, bottlenecks there. And then the last game I'm going to be playing here is Race the Sun. Uh, this is a game that apparently has no frame rate cap. I didn't know that before this. Uh, the 9500 GT was running at like 30s and I thought that that was actually pretty good for run the 9500 GT. Uh, but the input delay was the absolute killer for this graphics card. I would not recommend this graphics card if you're going to be playing Race the Sun because it was just so laggy. Like that you would push something and then it would react like a second later. Uh, so not a good experience. The GTX uh, 650 got rid of that problem completely. It ran much better in the hundreds of frames per second. Minimum was like 80, so it was running well over 60. <coughs> and then the GTX 960 ran this game really well, but I mean, once you get to over 200 frames per second, there's really no reason. There's really no point. And yeah, that's the end of my benchmarks here. So one thing I would wish, I do kind of wish I could try again, is uh, changing out the, because it had a two gigabyte stick of RAM and a one gigabyte stick of RAM. So I wish I could have taken out that one stick 
and put in a two stick as well so it would have four gigabytes of RAM and see what that did to the uh, did to the test but I don't have the computer anymore so I can't really do that and getting your hands on DDR2 this was running DDR2 three gigabytes of DDR2 I forgot to mention that uh, so it was really old memory really old CPU not very much memory and it was just not a very good experience so if you're going to be using this computer for gaming I would say don't get something a little bit newer spend a little bit more than like $20 on your CPU or your whole your whole computer I'm pretty sure you could get this whole computer for less than like 20 or 30 bucks uh, I certainly got it for less than that I gave it to somebody for a lot less than that uh, it was free. I gave it for I, gave, I got it for free and I gave it away for free. And so that's the end of that video. So you know, post comment down below about how bad I am at testing graphics cards because I don't use 0.11% and 0.1% loads, and how I should do that next time. You should post comment that about that down below. And uh, tell me if you're running an, an Athlon 64X2 computer and how much RAM you have and what graphics card you have in there. Uh, and then in my next video I'm going to be doing this computer over here that I can't reach, uh, which is the i7 4790K, 16GB of RAM, and uh, I'm actually going to be adding the 980. I figured it wasn't really worth it to add the 980 for the Athlon 64X2 computer. Um, but for this one, I will be doing the uh, GTX 980. That's the second newest graphics card I have. And yeah, I think that's basically it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment down below about what I just said. And I'll see you in the next video.